last, the day has turned on some real police car weather. The yacht is storming back up the coast, and they've picked up enough time to be threatening for a major place once again. Here it is, it's still here. Before they can round South Head for the sprint down Sydney Harbour, the crew must perform a complicated and potentially dangerous manoeuvre. It's called a drop set, changing sails at full speed, and they'll have to lower and stow the spinnaker without disturbing the boat's motion. How well they perform a sequence like this can win or lose yacht races. One small slip has led to disaster. The spinnaker breaks free and streams from the masthead like an enormous pennant. If the flapping sail stays in the water for more than a few seconds, it will sink and become a giant sea anchor. The price Hardy and his crew pay for their lapse in concentration is no more than a minute. But in a sport where places are decided by seconds, it's been Jibon, enough to cost them the race. Stay on the main. Jib on. Main still on. We're on the wind. Good work. Good work. After his younger son's tragic accident, Jim Hardy became actively involved with the problems of the visually impaired. He serves as vice president of the Royal Blind Society, and on public occasions such as the launching of a door knock appeal, is quite happy to let the society exploit his status as a national personality. Mr. Minister, on behalf of the Royal Blind Society, and its many members. Thank you very much indeed for this wonderful check. Uh, and I'm sure that this check will go a long way to help us get more of these machines for the visually impaired people of New South Wales. But Thank even for again. Jim Hardy, usually so cool and self-contained in any situation, life can still provide its little surprises. How are you? Oh, I'm pretty I well. feel as if I've won the America's Cup because Jim Hardy this is your life. You're joking. I am serious. You're joking. I am very serious. Uh, right well, I've waited right. a long time for this. Is that right? right on that camera, right there. Oh, uh, come on. I am very serious indeed. I thought that's something I'd know about. No, not in your life, you didn't. No. Oh, strike me. I'm Pete. sure you're not going to say no, are you? <laughs> no worries. If winning isn't everything, then Jim Hardy at the helm of his yacht gives the impression that it must go pretty close. Not even the urgent warnings of a super tanker rate more than a dismissive glance. Threading his way through the dense weekend traffic on Sydney Harbour, he even asks the crew to set one last spinnaker for the few hundred metres to the finish. Many skippers wouldn't bother. Police car crosses the line racing as hard as she can to the very last second. Everyone on board, Hardy included, knows it's a hopeless, gallant gesture. He's the main. But as Sir James himself often says, every family should be able to afford at least one gentleman. I'll need to. <laughs> Thanks very much. Jim, in the world of international competition, Australia has won the reputation of being an outstanding sailing nation. In the last decade, you've been skipper of many Australian entries in the great international yachting competitions. In our audience are men from the crews of those great racing yachts. Great or two, America's Cup 1970. <laughs> Southern Cross, 
America's Cup 1974. <laughs> Impetuous, Admiral's Cup 1979. <laughs> and Australia, America's Cup 1980.